Look up in the sky at the birds that play. It's- Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. And you're listening to The Krypton Report. Before we get started with our regular episode, I just had a few things to say. Um, I've been listening to some other podcasts and stuff, and there's been discussion uh, about John Burns, Man of Steel. And this has been kind of on my mind. As many of you guys know, I also join my friend Phil Parrish of Capes and Lunatics, and we do the Electric Mullet podcast, where we're reading the comics starting with Man of Steel straight through. We'll get into the 90s and everything like that, and just continuing forward. And so we've been, you know, we just, in that podcast, we just finished where Byrne was leaving the books completely. And I've just been sitting here thinking, like, I think John Byrne's Man of Steel is... I've never been a huge fan of it because there's a lot of things I don't like that's in it. But I feel like where he placed the character allowed other writers to take it and make it better. And I'm seeing that now in the books that we're reading that follow his run where they've taken the elements that he put and plotted and they're using them to make the stories even better and the characters more richer. And I think much like... Uh, sometimes in film series and things the person who initiated it gets the credit and I feel like what's coming good from this run isn't as much from what Byrne was writing but the people who were writing around him in that continuity if, if, if you're following me and you make sense um, you know and as far as what Byrne did in the origin I feel that everything that was good in John Byrne's origin for uh, Superman is, you know, redone later in other origins as well. So, and leaving out a lot of stuff I don't like from it. I just, I just, it's been on the brain because we just, you know, we read through it. Um, You know, the biggest thing I think that comes out of John Byrne's Man of Steel origin for Superman really is... Uh, the Lex character, the businessman, the tycoon type. And I feel like that's carried in other versions. Most notably, you know, we were having a discussion. We have Jeff John's Secret Origin and you have Mark Waid's Birthright, which have really been the kind of big origin for Superman that we have, you know, now continuity is all everything matters type thing. But this has been on my mind. So, all right. Back to the Krypton Report. Check out Electric Mullet. Take care. And welcome to the Krypton Report podcast. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the Man of Tomorrow. And with me is James, the Superman of Red, Mr. Flippin' Cole. And together, we are part of the greatest podcast of all time not just playing um we are the all things superman and dc comics podcast and we welcome everyone to join us how is everyone doing hopefully well hopefully better than part of the day that i've had today but it's life how are you mr cole oh i mean like somewhere along the lines of you not sure well from what i saw earlier probably not quite that far yeah, but just um, I've, I've had some knocks on my day, so we're uh, but uh, we're I'm recording right. this a little behind, um, because we had Father's Day and James and I both are dads, so we kind of were like, hey, we'll we'll record Monday and you know get it out Monday night, because uh, we've been trying to get our podcast out on Mondays, um, but then last night I was not feeling the best, and James is you know getting over being sick. And today I was like super pumped to record. And then uh, a friend I hadn't talked to in a while was like when I was in college, um, she was in a car accident and died last night. And it just kind of surreal. She, you know, was our age in her thirties and a very sweet and very caring person. And, you know, she's, she's gone now. So it just hits you home. It just hits you hard. And uh, yeah, sorry to hear that condolences to her friends and family yeah it's just um it's tough it's uh so i've just been thinking on stuff so everyone i just reach out and i tell people reach out to those you love 
people you maybe you haven't talked to. Let them know you're thinking about them. Let them know that you still care. And uh, it's never too late to, you know, fix anything that's broken. Okay. But with that, we're going to get into today's podcast. Um, and yeah, we got some cool news. First off, so I don't have all the reference images for this yet. Um, I was trying to, but today, so I'm going to try to pull these up as we go. But today they are in Ohio. They are currently working on setting parts of Cleveland up to represent Metropolis, which is cool and honoring, um, you know, uh, the legacy of Superman that, you know, they're incorporating where Superman was created, which I love, which is, you know, near us. Woo woo. Um, mm-hmm. I actually thought about trying to go up there tomorrow because I do have the day off tomorrow. Thank you. Federal holidays. Um, and I'll pull nice. up. Nice. But here's the outside of the Daily Planet building as of right now. Um, there's been some other ones, but I just don't have because, like I said, it just broke today. And uh, yeah, well, but they have that old building revolving door thing that looks yeah. on the front. I always like, you know, for me, I always wanted to shoot Metropolis, like do some exterior shots and stuff from um, Dubai. I always thought Dubai looked like a city of the future. If you look at some of the pictures and stuff, very kind of Metropolis esque. So I always thought some exterior shots from that would be cool. But hey, they're in our backyard, James, so to speak. Yeah, that that's cool. Um, no, I I feel you. You know, that'd be nice to drive out there, just see what they've got going on out there. Even if they're not shooting anything in those areas at the moment, like just see what they've got going on. I know they have. So cool. I know they have two weeks scheduled for filming in Cleveland, and then like a week to two weeks, and then they have two days set for Cincinnati. And I already have the days off for Cincinnati. So I might just try to go out there. Uh, for that. I, might, I think that's a little closer, isn't it? Yeah, it's Not closer. And my good friend lives in Cincinnati, so I just go crash at his place. Um, oh, that'd to. be cool. Yeah, but, unfortunately, Cleveland's a couple hours away from me. So yeah, it's still like almost three for me. You know, because we need stop. to go stay. We just need to go stay at a hotel. That's what we yeah. Need to do. <laughs> um. So yeah, there's that. But this is interesting. So DC is launching its own official Discord. Yeah, I don't want to be part of that. <laughs> There's enough Discord already just talking to people <laughs> online as it is. Could you imagine trying to have a chat with that many people on Discord? Jeez. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know about just a single. I mean, I know you can have like all kinds of different like sub categories on discord and stuff like that on the server so maybe you could find a chat that you're interested in and chat with the people in there um i mean that's funny though discord uh it's <laughs> just has been that's all it's been for the last uh 11 years you know yep so and and longer i mean heck you could take that all the way back so far like <laughs> uh every generation there are um, in mishandlings yeah, of, of the property, you know, of, mm-hmm. of the pro- <laughs> so it's, it's really crazy how that in, in itself history has repeated itself in such a short amount of time over and over and over again. So um, we got you confirmation. Know, speaking of stuff, uh, oh, one, one real, one thing I would just want to interject from my reading, um, uh, you know, you um, just talking about Ohio, I'm reading the um, the Nicole Maines uh, Suicide Squad Dream Team uh, ap- uh, countdown to absolute power, and uh, they were just talking about Parthus, the alien community being in rural Ohio. I was like, awesome, that's <laughs> sweet. <laughs> You're like, yes. You're like, thank you. Feels like feels like Walbridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's like wasn't if I'm, wasn't Doom Patrol set in Ohio? Yeah. 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 All right. So New York's New York's got a lot of Marvel people. Ohio's got DC people. I'll take it. (laughs) We we know that Penguin is going to be coming out on Max in September. So that's pretty cool. That's like right at the end of the summer, you know, right after summer. Kind of and Creature Commandos, 
will release in December. So that's, <laughs> you know, that's more we're excited about. Good oh, yeah, I'm definitely excited. There's there's actually a lot of DC content coming out this year. Um, and it's, it's just, and it's begun now with with my adventures of Superman. There's there's a lot of different things coming out this year for it. And speaking of my adventures with Superman, we got oh, confirmation that. that season three is happening. Woo woo. So <laughs> I feel like I have my prediction that this season will kind of wrap up and season three might be like a time jump or like mm. start a new arc or something. Because I feel like we they only they 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 knew they had two seasons. You know, they weren't sure. So I feel like the way they've done the show so far, they may have constructed two seasons. If that was it, that was it, you know? So I'm thinking that maybe season three will be like the start of a new arc or something else, or, you know, um, it could be some craziness going on. Poor James. Um, Laura came bursting in the room. <laughs> Um, and supposedly we might see some characters from Cruiser Commandos appear in Superman. Um, so we'll see what that ex- exactly means. Um, but we also got news that a Blue Beetle animated series in the works. And so far, it sounds like this animated series is going to be a continuation of um of the film. So I'm hope I'm hoping, you know, that we get that. Also it's worth mentioning right now that we had this past Saturday was our first Superman the animated series live watch along. So join us at 9 a.m. Eastern time to watch along every Saturday of an episode of Superman the animated series. We'll be watching season one episode two next. Here are some wonderful podcasts. If you don't, if you can't get enough of us for Superman, we're sharing this with our fans and listeners. Join these other amazing Superman creators and content makers to get all of your super needs. These are my little plugs for now. Um, and then we ran a poll, and you know, like we talked about that after my adventures until my adventure season three, um, <clears throat> and um after Superman Lois, we won't have any really live super coverage, you know, to do. So I asked the question, should we do an episode at the end of Superman and Lois season or do episode by episode coverage like we've done in the past? And through our short poll here, um, episode by episode. So we will be covering doing our continual format. Now speaking oh, of, I was going to say, yeah, that's, I was like, I was going to be like, I'm, a, I'm voting for episode by episode, man. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, um, but that's... we got this image today, as we got four images for Superman and Lois season four. One was just Lex's face in a window. One was Kyle's face. One would just said Superman and Lois the final season over some clouds and then Doomsday. We're still waiting for. It was a part of a big CW fall lineup thing that you know looked like bullcrap because the CW is nothing anymore and yeah um now well it certainly doesn't have any of the genre shows that you know it has the new like drew like, in the long the drew in the the like our generation all the stuff that came I mean that how many how many shows in and in, in how many different genres I mean they had Riverdale they had you know, supernatural all the way back through Smallville and Roswell. I mean, they had, and then all the different vampire shows that did so well and their spinoffs and things like they had years worth of shows that drew people in. And now, um, a lot of people who all of those shows are just are gone there. There's nothing for them to watch anymore. And I mean, I'm not even watching the CW anymore. There's nothing there. And I'm just going to buy Superman and Lois like I did. You know, oh, me too. Year. Yep. Um, so, um, the next big thing is we got our first trailer teaser trailer of the Watchmen animated film. 
And we learned that part one will release in 2024 and part two in 2025. And you know what? I'm not really that excited for it. Um, it's the 2D CG animation similar to what they did with Super Sons, which I thought was fine for Super Sons. But I don't know, man. Like, it looks interesting, but I'm just like, do I need this animated movie? Well, I mean, we've got such a great um, live action movie that looks so good, that is so good, but also, you know, um, the the TV show that came after it, that was a really great successor to really both the movie and the the comic, but, you know, leaned more towards the comic, and um, they kind of used some of the classic stylings uh, of the character suits in that. Um, I think from our from the trailer here, that's what we're getting is the classic style of those suits, um, you know, and maybe we're going to get a uh, an animated version that sticks more um, more towards the comic like our like uh, the Dark Knight Returns uh, part one and part two. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see, you know. Um, and then we got one more piece for James to do here, but I'm going to ask some questions real quick where we've been reading over at electric mullet. Uh, I have a question, Mr. Cole. Uh, yeah. Do you think that James Gunn might tease a relationship between Jimmy Olsen and Cat Grant for Superman 2025? Hmm. Do you think that could be something? Um, well, I mean that 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 character relationship, you know, back in heck back in the '90s when it was Lois and Clark, you know, he always had a crush on Cat uh, Grant. Uh, so it would be that that's just evolved over the years. I think, you know, I mean, I I would assume that she is an older woman to Jimmy. <laughs> she um, is, and that's that's yeah. the thing. In this, are they contemporaries in this? Um, in in this world, yeah, I'm I'm just saying I I think there's still an age gap, and that's the part of the relationship like it was in the comics, man. Like she is she is going hard on him in the comics right now. Like it's an interesting little. Uh, well, little I know thing. in the comics right now he is dating Silver. Well, uh, I'm talking Silver about where Andrew. we're. I'm talking about now. Oh, where we're oh, I'm mullet. sorry. You you did say mullet. You did say mullet. That's right. You know and. I'm just like, um, you know, that does seem like the age of comics that Gunn is passionate about because that's what he grew up with. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, like with, with the, the way he pulls characters. Yeah, I'm just saying. And also, um, you know, other questions for people to think about. Will James Gunn be the first live action um, Superman property to really, really, um, uh, restore the history of Superboy. Will this Superman have a history of being Superboy before being Superman? <gasps> Think about it. Is that just a random question? Yeah, these are my questions. Thin air. Okay. These are my, these are my questions. I was gonna say, say, what's okay? I was gonna say, what's bringing, what's bringing that about? Just me thinking. Uh, being bored. Okay. I'm driving. Um, right now with all these castings, yeah, well, my, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we still have casting of Dan Turpin and Maggie Sawyer to be cast rounding out Metropolis. Cause I really right. feel like well, I need Dan Turpin, Maggie Sawyer and Bibbo. So I want to, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Do you want everybody in the Metropolis umbrella in this first movie? Or do you want to leave a couple of people that in a sequel so we're not stuck with one damn Superman movie for an entire line well, of films 
do you want to see sequels and have those characters in them as well? Well, I want to see sequels and have these characters. Okay. But if, if this is all say we got, I'd like to see some of this, like the world, because this is the second question I bring to you. You probably don't remember years ago. We I pitched, have a question. We pitched a bunch of Superman ideas for movies to each other. Mm -hmm. And I told you my idea would be to do a Superman movie like for a trilogy. My first movie would be him crashing on earth and I would not do anything with Krypton. But my second film would open with the destruction of Krypton and be more sci-fi and Krypton heavy. Now, so far in this production of Superman, we have gotten no Kryptonian casting. So what if Gunn is not even going to touch Krypton and Jarrell and all that type stuff will be in his sequel. Watch. He'll announce Jarrell tomorrow. Watch. Um, but that's kind of my thinking. What if this is more of a Metropolis centered film and we're building the world of Metropolis. And then in the sequel, we build out the sci-fi elements with uh, the Kryptonian lineage. Hmm. Think just thought this is just me. Right. Yeah. I mean, that is a possibility. There was the talk about in the beginning, like him being very um, alien, it, focusing very much on the Kryptonian side. Just because I feel like as I well as, but, but from, but from the very beginning, the, from the time James Gunn has come on, like there have been a little bit of pullbacks, not, not like a whole lot or anything, but just a little bit. I mean, we know it's an evolving, uh, it, it's, it's a revolving door, bring it yeah, back around yeah. of, of ideas and things that get thrown in the air and then eventually get shot down a little bit because, because everything that you write can't be shot. Yeah. You know what I mean? There, there are certain ideas that are too grandiose to be shot or, or at least, you know, need the technology needs to be invented to make it possible. That's how that gets pushed forward. But, you know, it, it does it does take time. I mean, and it's not like Jim, it's not like uh, James Gunn has Jim Cameron's level of time and money to invest and invent the technology to make what he wants to make. <laughs> right. I also I got another question for you. And I was thinking about this. With um, this film. I. I was thinking about, I kind of like the heat vision to go back to being like it was in Smallville and Superman Returns. Yeah, kind of invisible wave-like. Yeah, like actually like this, like you can see pulsating heat from his eyes. Like maybe the rings or the waves, you know, um, and kind of move away from like the laser beam look of heat vision. I mean, you know, I, I really, I still really can't, uh, uh, get over the use of heat vision in the Snyder films, you know, the way heat vision was done there because it was done at so many varying, um, levels and intensities. I mean, when he was a kid in the closet and he heated, he heated up the, um, the, the handle, um, his eyes glowed red. There was no heat lines. There was no laser vision and it's still heated up and burned very similar to how he melted the ice when he was walking through and made his tunnel. But then when he, when he liquefied a like, you know, two ton I beam girder that was getting swung at him and he liquefied it in an instant, it was a very intense, heavy beam. It's true. You know? So, so, I mean, with that level of heat to be able to incinerate a beam, liquefy it in an instant, I mean, it would have to be visible, in my opinion. I, just the levels, you know, of it mm -hmm. being just heat and then to a degree that it's, uh, inc like, incredibly visible like that. I, I really like that. But, um... You know, I love Smallville's over the years. I thought it looked really great. And same thing with Superman Returns. It was barely noticeable. It was just, just the heat waves, the light, clear heat lasers that you could see. Mm-hmm.
So I'm just saying, I just feel like, you know, we've had a lot of representation on one side, you know, kind of peeling it back to see another side here. Um, but that's the last thing I have is for Mr. Cole here to tell us about the, the upcoming DC game that's coming to coming out. Ah, uh, DC dark legions. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, so uh, it is. It appears to be a mobile game of such of type, um, something similar to like uh, Galaxy of Heroes or Marvel uh, Marvel Strike Force. Um, it actually might be another step up. It looks like it has a couple of different um, little modes and mini game types involved with it. But uh, um, you are you get to create your own league built on heroes and villains um, to take on who the ultimate bad guy is in that game would be the Batman who laughs. Um, and it's got something like a, uh, something like the crisis tuning forks, but in this, in this regard, they're used to like bring the dark multiverse energies to earth as mm. opposed to repel the, antimatter wave so you know kind of brought in 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 a different way so uh they've released a trailer for it there's a couple of images you can see what appears to be like some probably beta testers online playing some of the game uh if you want to watch some youtube videos Uh, but uh yeah uh, it's supposed to be out later this year and you know uh mobile games can be fun you know if you just I mean, you go to a doctor's appointment, sit down, play a game for a little while or something while you're waiting. Who know? You know, those mm-hmm. ones you can play quickly, and it, those ones just play a little bit and put it aside. You know, for people who enjoy gaming like I do, but doesn't don't have as much time to sit down on games like I uh, like some games require. Yep. Um, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, it's fun to get in a little bit of time with games like that. And I'm looking forward to a DC game. Something right. similar to those other two games that I have a good time with. Um, so that's all I have for news. And now we're going to get into my adventures with Superman. Because this show is awesome. And everything is awesome. <laughs> everything is awesome. <laughs> um, but so the episode is entitled Season 2, Episode 5 Most Eligible Superman. Lois and Clark's relationship is pushed to the breaking point as Superman is named Metropolis' most eligible bachelor, while Jimmy gives a mysterious girl a tour all over Metropolis. A girl on a mission to find her long lost cousin. All right. This episode right was so fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was. It was right off the top. Supergirl is dressed like Android 18 from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I saw like before they released. <laughs> What's crazy is if you go online, very similar. <laughs> right as these episodes are dropping on Max. There's already like a teaser trailer for next week's episode. Um, so like when that teaser for this episode dropped last week, people were already saying that. Um, oh, about okay. How Supergirl looked. Excuse me. And I only knew about it because of uh, Superman homepage, but I loved like that they sucker. Basically, Clark into well, going we don't for this. watch them live on on Adult Swim. Yeah, we, we watch, watch it till next on morning, Sunday on Max. Or, it's our morning breakfast uh, tradition. Yeah, <clears throat> get up, have some coffee, and watch some man, uh, My Adventures of Superman. I like how they they suckered Superman in slash Clark because it's for charity for kids in hospital, and he's <laughs> yeah. like. A little hologram. It's all the money goes to sick kids. And he was like, oh, and she was like, he's definitely going to be there. <laughs> this this episode is loaded with so much like. I mean, you have. 
Lois and Clark's relationship. Uh, Lois thinking that Cat Grant's figuring out the relationship. Um. Yeah, she was so obvious like the whole friggin' time, and Cat was so oblivious. Trying to pick up on all these clues, and she's like right in front of you, just like, yeah. <laughs> and just Jimmy trying to make up with Clark, but avoiding Clark, and then meeting uh, Kara, you know, and she's like, I gotta find my cousin, or I gotta find somebody. And it's very interesting. Yeah, oh, there, look- there's a lot going on in this episode. I mean, I like in the end when Jimmy's like, um, you know, I'm sorry I I used you to avoid my friend. Yeah, I, but I, I love when she's like, he's like, oh, you're here to find a guy. She's like, my cousin is like, oh, it's your cousin. All right. Okay. <laughs> Not a boyfriend. Um, I, I love that they gave... Uh, that they gave Jimmy and Kara an ice cream moment. Um, very reminiscent of Steve and Wonder Woman in the movie in the new 52. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So most, we finally got confirmation that we have fighter pilot and star labs, astronaut Hank Henshaw. So I told you it was Henshaw. And we finally got confirmation. Now, Shandi Gupta, does that ring any comic bells for you? No. I'm assuming the three people, the other people up there were somebody from the comics, but the only two that I knew was Hank Henshaw and Silver St. Cloud. Brian Brilliant. Yeah. Berna. And then Silver St. Cloud, they uh, made her tall and thick. Uh, yeah, the way she would, the way they they had made her, I was wondering who that was. Like, I was like, is she Barda? Be like Amazon <laughs> yeah. or a or, or Barda or something like that? But no, it was Silver St. Cloud, and I was like. I was, I was like that Friday meme. Damn. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> all right. Like that's our second Gotham person. And I was like, oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, it was cool. And it was a deep pull, you know, and I like how they made her a, a billionaire um, charitable person. It, that was really cool because she's always she runs with the rich and everything like that. But um, just using that in this angle and, and this um eligible bachelor show oh and she's Uh, so into superman like she is and the whole fact that like that's probably why hank was so upset (laughs) yeah and then hank turns and does the whole like earth is for earthlings yeah uh hank henshaw not being a fan of superman i know it's different this time around i do like that our jimmy meter came back this episode when he was like buying food and snacks and stuff with Kara. Didn't food food's a little expensive in Metropolis, but <laughs> it didn't crank out like when he bought a limo and I know, chartered just... a jet and you know, because I don't know many jet charters that'll fly you to the Arctic. <laughs> I don't know. He got he had money, so Yeah, right. <laughs> um but I think you need Luther money for that type, for that type of expedition. But you know, this episode, you have all this working in like Clark, Lois, and Clark have a huge kind of falling out where she's like, it's not working, and she breaks up with him. Um, and they're both talking about. You know, like it's they both she didn't tell him about her job offer and he didn't tell her about some, trying to summon Kara. And. Um, so, like, that was just. Well, so the last couple of episodes, they've been pulled apart by various things. Um, I mean, Lois is always chasing her story and Superman is always the story. And that's how they usually wind up together. But um 
uh, in this, in this route, like she's had some, she's had trying to find her dad. Um, she, she had the, uh, competitive, competitive, uh, run against, um, Vicky. Uh, so they haven't had a lot of time together. Um, and a lot of time to talk. They've shown them call each other and leave each other messages, but they've missed each other. And mm-hmm. so that's put like, that's put a strain that puts a strain on a relationship when you can't talk to each other, but also, um, uh, the way that, uh, cat is getting into her head that you have to be superhuman to be with Superman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's, that is, that's kind of the thing with Superman though, is yeah, he's Superman, but he's Clark. Yeah. You know, he's Superman to the world, but to himself, he's still Clark. And, and he wants to be with the person that he cares about, the person that he loves and they don't, and she is as superhuman as he needs. You know, she keeps him on his toes. Yep. So, uh, I mean, we, we know that as, (laughs) as longtime fans and this story has been going on forever, but so yeah, them just them and, and they want they want to talk to each other, but everything always kind of gets in the way. Like at the very beginning, they're trying to talk to each other, and then Perry drags him into his office. And I love every time they bring in Perry cuz it's always snap cuts, yes. you know? They're talking to each other and then bam, they're in his office in the dark and he's whispering to them. And then bam, cats in the window screaming that it's her beat. And then when he says, you guys are going, cat's not going, bam, the door closes. Like, I love the way they just like snap cut Perry. Like he's the boss. Like he lays down the hammer and boom, slams the door. Get out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so they have, like I said, they have their falling out. And, but before that, I wanted to mention, I totally forgot because of my notes got scattered, but we have, um, Ara talking with Jimmy, like you said, where he talks about his, you know, best friend and she's like, Jimmy Flamebird is this best friend. You're now your enemy. I will destroy them. <laughs> your <laughs> enemy will be my enemy. Yeah. So I will make your enemy. My enemy, I believe is what she's <laughs> I love this because we're seeing, I, we're seeing Kara for who she is. You know, we're really seeing who she is. And then like they go to the TV station and she's like overwhelmed by all the, all the craziness. The lights and the media. Madness. And, then she, like, and then it dawns on, like, she says something. She's like, Oh, there's my cousin. And he's like, Oh, Oh, <laughs> right. And Lois loses it when she sees Silver kiss Superman on the cheek. But she told him to play the role, you know? And then, of course, he runs after her. And then Kara confronts him. And he says, sorry, I need to do something. So he runs off and Kara gets mad. Because she's been looking for him. And she's angry. And, uh... Yeah, like he's supposed to know that she's his cousin, you know, Uh (laughs) kind of a thing. I mean, I understand she's kind of in a she's she's being over overloaded and overstimulated right now with uh, everything that's going on. Um, But she definitely went from zero to crazy in like no time flat. (laughs) She calls Jimmy a temptation. And she did, yeah. This is so, so oh. one of my predictions kind of came through, man. That the other person we we saw at the end of the last season, and then when they talked about Kara, I was like everyone thought it might have been Zod. And no, it's it's Kara. Kara in the suit saying Neil. Yeah. Yeah. And it's She's being, she has her bracelet connected to Primus. 
Primus, who she calls father. Um, which is what Brainiac. So. Um, so. And then we get a big fight between. Uh, yeah. The, the Kara Primus, and Superman. Uh, yeah. Primus sounds very robotic. But she says father, so I'm not sure that that's so. That's this is my Zor-El, theory, or they can't be Zorel. See, so, cyborg know, Superman, cyborg that, Zorel. That's <laughs> one one thought. But my other thought is the two rockets we know launched at the same time. They were both kids. Yeah, and my thought is he got to Earth and Brainiac caught Karis. and so mm. he's been raising her, taking care of her, feeding her lies about the Kryptonian Empire and everything. So she's very much because we, she's very much brainwashed by his. Uh, All right, kind of how Kara spent years with the Monitor in the Tomorrowverse. Yeah, and when he, when when Clark like busts her uh, suit off, and we see her like in her like black and red suit, is awesome. Yeah, I like that. So. We have Supergirl. We we I mean we see signs that you know she's the car that we want her to be because he calls her Scion. Primus calls her Scion. So that was going to be my question for you: is we see her and she acts very much, she acts very much like a like a girl learning some things who's got a secret, who's carrying a weight or whatever, some naivete because she's an alien, you know, separate from this world, that type of stuff. But when she's speaking to Primus and Primus calls her Scion and says, um, um, uh, what do you hesitate? Why do you hesitate? Or, um, Mm -hmm. will you, or, or you, or will you obey or something like that? her her eyes change Mm. if you look at it her eyes change like the pupil disappears i'm not sure if it's like a like a cataract covering or like you know the lights go out or something and she's being partially controlled like mind uh you know mind manipulated yeah through part of this you know i Mm -hmm. i think i think she's i think she's not just following and being bad, you know, being this Kryptonian Empire thing, I think there's some sort of mind control thing going on with the way that that looks. Dro- her eyes changed. She dropped her head. I will comply. Yeah. And she go and then she goes off and beats Superman's butt. For the Empire, I do anything. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's a nice little twist, you know, of it being Supergirl and. Well, with that suit, because when it like goes on her, it's like massive upper body, like alien structure looking thing. And she takes Clark, Superman. I mean, it was a good episode. The show never disappoints. It does not. It is. I, I Honestly, I can say I can watch every single episode through the 15 that we have right now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but all right. So that ends up our discussion on this. My adventures of ep- my adventures of episode. My adventure of Superman episode. And now a word from the children. Hand wash real quick. Sayla, just tell me what do you think of my adventures of Superman's episode? I was mad. I don't want to spoil it, but I was mad. You can spoil it. it's okay because I'll play this after we talk about it. All right. Um, Kara. Uh, AKA Supergirl. They, Brainiac controlling her. For me, I thought she was a bad guy. I'm like, man, I didn't want Kara to be a bad guy. I want her to be a good guy. But Brainiac raised Kara after the spaceship flew up in outer space. And it landed where Brainiac is. Brainiac was trying to make Kara. But we might, it might be Brainiac, who knows. Uh, but yeah, I'm just mad because they made Kara a little bit as a bad guy. But that told me to wait until, uh, you know. Anyways, it's Father's Day. Bye, guys.
Solomon, your thoughts. Um, so the Hank Winshaw. Hank um, Yeah, 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 whatever his name is. <laughs> but, um, he, um, it set up Cyborg Superman because he was like, he's like, oh, I hate Superman. And it, set, it kind of set up Cyborg Superman. And, um, Primus, um, what, who controls Kara, that's what I think, yeah, um, is, we think it's Brainiac. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe it's, um, I don't, I, 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 maybe it's her father? Like, we, like, like, it, 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 it's, it's very hard to say. Also, um. Her father's dead, so I'm like. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. We'll see. Um, also, I have to say, um, when Kara had to do her, like, heat vision blast, Superman put the ice. He did the ice breath. That was, I was, I was waiting for that. The I was ice, waiting for that the moment. Ice, the ice breath is the best breath. Yep, and so that's my theory about the episode. So, bye, guys. And also, Jimmy... I think Jimmy's trying to flirt with Kara. Yeah, but yeah. He, he is. He, he, he has red cheeks. He has red cheeks. And so is Kara. There's, there's something going on with them, too. Bye, guys. I am Brian Peters, the creator and host of Gravely Amusing. For the past 30 years, I've studied the history of gods and monsters in pop culture and our world. As a student of theology and history, I've tried to understand evil and its impact on us. As a writer, I've tried to share this knowledge. As a comedian, I've tried to make people laugh as I do it. But as a man-child, I'm still that scared seven-year-old boy. Join me as I share the history of horror and sci-fi, discuss classic and modern pop culture, and share a creepy story or two. This podcast may scare you. It may horrify you or it may leave you gravely amused. Listen to Gravely Amusing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever podcasts are found. Follow us on Twitter at Gravely underscore Amusing, or on TikTok at Gravely Amusing. We have a $1 Patreon. Yes, I know everyone asks for money, but our $1 Patreon each month gets you commentary tracks for recent movies, DC movies, it gets you my requel series where I pitch ideas about movie sequels, prequels, or whatever. It also gets special bonus episodes. So check that out for $1 a month. That's all we ask. Keep it cheap. Keep it simple. And help us keep going. Check out the link in the show notes or Patreon Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, And if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. And we're back. So now it's time for James to sing us a song. Sing us a song, James. Uh, <laughs> but we were covering now from Our the- <laughs> <laughs> Superman, New 52 Superman Volume 3, Fury at World's End is what we're covering now. Let me give you a quick synopsis. Hell has come to Earth. When a mysterious ghost from Krypton's past comes to Metropolis in hopes of finding the lost planet's last son, his arrival comes with disastrous consequences for not just Superman, but Superboy and Supergirl. Hell has decided that Earth is the place to resurrect Krypton, but at the price of everyone's life on the planet. It's all-out war between the villain, Superman, the Justice League, Superboy, Supergirl. But whose side is everyone on? The newest epic begins here in Superman Volume 3, written by Scott Lubdell with stunning visuals by Kenneth Rick Ruckefort collection of Superman number zero and Superman 13 through 19. All right. This is, um, yeah. (laughs) Oh, I was going to say, so I've read the, um, hell Mm storyline, uh, from all different angles and all the tie in books. Yeah, it's really weird to read this story in just the handful of chapters on the Superman book. <laughs> it is, and you know what? I did it on purpose because, like, part of our mission with this reading is: can you read this stuff the way it comes in the trades, or do you need all the tie-ins? Do um, 
you have to read everything. Um, now the first book here. And so the first comic is issue zero and it's kind of this, I kind of wanted, I remember when I bought some of these zero issues, I wanted more from it than what we got, you know, and it's like a, it's a Jarrell story. And the biggest part about this issue really for me was it gave Lara something to do. And we saw how awesome she really is. And we see that Krypton had like these rebels and stuff uh, that were, you know, on the planet. And was actually trying to cover up its destruction. And, and, but yeah, to me, it was more about Lara. Um, I mean, yeah, I seen the, you know, the, the bits where she actually had something to do in the story. Uh, you know, just from this book, uh, you know, I was only thinking in terms of this book, it's, it's been a, a few years since I read hell. So is that okay? I was going to ask you is how you pronounce it? Like hell or hell, like hell, like, is it just hell? Like, how do you pronounce it? I just put it hell. Yeah. Like the first time, like when it came out, I said, hell, um, and then I don't know. I've you know I've never heard it really said out loud, but um, but, it could be Hael, but um, because they do the apostrophe. Short, yeah, but as shorthand, when I read it, I just read it as Hell. Spoiler alert: I think he was a completely underdeveloped character and could have been something really good from this era. And been a character that we all kind of talk about as like kind of a new character going forward. But his whole like creation story is like everything else, super over convoluted and not needed. Right. And but in the he, end we get that he's just like he was he still made it back to Krypton in, in the past. Um but is he's he dead? A, he, He's stuck like in a cycle. Like it, it like I said, it's over convoluted and you can't it doesn't make sense like completely. It's like and it was he was in a ship. I was, was just like, wondering if you think he could still show up I mean, one day if somebody wanted to do a deep pull and write a story with hell again. Um I think it'd be cool to, and you make him like you really like touch on him. And I don't know. Like I hate that we get like, you know, he got his name from, it stood for house of L the ship said, and he just took the H and the L. Um, for his namesake, but, but like his, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Okay. We'll get there. Cause you know, I'm looking at this issue. They will join you in the sun. Where he's like, like where we're, I remember reading this book for the first time, because technically we are now in this second year of the new Fifty Two. Because I think, if I remember right, the zero books were all like at the one year mark. Uh, I believe so. I believe that's when the zero books came out, and uh, the the original copyright for. The zero thirteen through seventeen is twenty twelve and twenty thirteen, so it is full on the second year. You know, we started in twenty eleven, and I, I point that out because of some of the else that happens in this book. But I remember, so this would have been because I, I had started picking up books around this time because I remember reading this one because. Clark in this, like at the center of the earth in this machine where he's basically bench pressing the earth's weight. I was like, holy, sh this is like intense. Yeah. Like this is some serious super stuff here. And he, and he barely broke a bead of sweat. I'm like, okay, this is, this to me is like trying to make him see how powerful he is. So when we get to Mr. Hell here, when he fights Clark, we're trying to say how much more powerful he is. Yeah. Because other than that, like, this makes Superman completely like nothing's going to stop him. But 
I was looking at the context of this, this whole Dr. Veritas, had we seen her before? Like in any, I don't remember her in any other comics or anything. Do you? Um, this is, is the, the, this is the place I, the main place I believe I see seen her from. I don't recall her too much outside of any Superman new 52. And she's not the same doctor that was in all star. No, he was something else. Wasn't he? I can't remember his name. Mm. Uh, that was, um, it was not Dr. Veritas. Yeah, I just Veritas I just is a is a name a Superman fan remembers. Yeah, for real. <laughs> right. um, truth, especially hmm. our generation, right? But I did like just a little bit. Like Janine was looking over my shoulder when uh, when I was reading this. She was laying in bed reading it, and she was like, "Oh, what's going on with his suit?" Because we had a couple of panels of like the suit retracting into the chest emblem, you know. And she's looking at Doctor Veritas like, "Uh, okay, who's this? What's this?" Oh my gosh, dude. I am so tired of this DC Universe Infinite uh trying to use it from a web page. Like it just keeps resetting. Oh no. Itself. Um, like Yeah, I've used it a couple of times on a on the computer and it's only when we were recording. Um I've never actually sat down and used my computer to read. But see, I, mean, I, I actually I did, may have once or twice, but like neither here nor there. It's something I, I did don't do. Last year when I part of a uh, spoiler, when I was subbing, you know, full time and I would do study halls and a lot of study halls was just to read. I would pull up on my laptop and mm. read from. Absolutely. The, uh, because we were all reading and that's all I had access to really. Absolutely. Um, and if I could, I mean, God forbid, you know, knock on wood, something doesn't happen to my tablet. But if that happened, I'd have to read off of my computer more. Uh, Cause it'd be my phone and my computer. So we have Superman, you know, return to the daily planet and there's confrontation going on there. Um, and I can't really pull the panels up because my computer reset. Um, but we see that a Kryptonian dragon is attacking a building and Clark goes to fight it. And it's coming undone and Kara Supergirl shows up. And we get the final page is Superman yelling with Supergirl, who they have an interesting relationship at this point. And then there's hell in the background. And I just don't like his look. And I don't know if it's trying to invoke that he actually is a member of the House of L. Or if they had actually made him something more of a House of L. Like if they had made his character where maybe Jarrell was trying to clone himself or trying to make like a quote unquote test tube baby because they couldn't conceive naturally or something and given him more of an origin story like that could have made mm. more sense. Certainly would make more sense with the uh, brother angle. He tries to play with Clark. Right. You know, and the fact that we know that the bio suit reads your DNA because his pants look like, looks like he's wearing Clark's cape as like a waist cape. And then yeah. he has pants and boots. Like tying his flannel around his waist. Yeah. Um, but the next issue, I really like the next issue, the way it starts a lot. Because it's the one where it, it ties into an issue of Supergirl. Because I did read those. You can read the whole series. But just reading it this, you have Clark seeing Lois at the door through his, his x-ray vision. And he describes her and talks about her. And this really feels like they're getting the Clark and Lois relationship better than what we've discussed before. How it felt disconnected, but then Supergirl shows up and Lois thinks it's a, a cosplayer. And it's, it's just an interesting dynamic. And then Supergirl and Superman are talking and then hell shows up and tries to reveal himself. And he's all busted up and scarred. And he talks about being exposed to more, um, fall as whole radiation and damage being in space. But then we get the twist where he pulls out the con. And this is, you know, our introduction to Superboy in the new 52. And what are your feelings on the Superboy new 52? Uh, 
pause one second. I want to pose to you that issue zero suit. <laughs> okay. Um, so before I hold that thought real quick, I want to say, I feel like this one thing, because I got my browser working better. Um, I feel very angsty with Clark, like in, in just his attitude, like what he's putting up with Morgan Edge at the Daily Planet. He just seems out of place everywhere he goes. It's interesting. He's much more a little bit aggressive. And I say that because I'm I'm planting seeds for when we get to action and then later on. But what are your thoughts on the new 52 Superboy? Superboy? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't remember a whole lot of the Superboy run, um, outside of the events that he mm -hmm. was involved in from the new 52. Um, I thought the suit was kind of cool, <laughs> but, um, uh, he was like, yeah, he was very, um, uh, angsty and, and, um, I just like didn't angry. like. I didn't like the whole idea that like there were they called him the con, uh, and it meant like clone and like clones were a whole thing on Krypton. Or and they eventually rebelled, and they talked about like the clones pass. I just thought that was just too much. Um. So the um. I I don't know. I mean, like, yeah the the idea of clones and stuff. Um, con being abomination. I believe yeah uh it was and it was just it was an interesting idea of a history uh i mean if you i guess if you consider that krypton um uh was was this scientifically advanced civilization for how many tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of years um, before the planet, before the planet was destroyed, I, I think at some point along the lines, they probably would have tried cloning. Um, they did talk about, uh, them being spacefaring people and that they, and that they, um, had outlawed it. Um, it just, I don't know. So, I just feel like Superboy to me, but feels the, like a character they could have waited on in the new 52. Yeah. And not had because I feel like it's they're trying to be a version of Connor, but it just I don't know, it just doesn't come off right. I just that's one of those characters I just because even like I remember later on they do something where they get rid of this new fifty two superboy and another superboy like I'm trying to remember replaces him before we even get to rebirth. Like it's it's weird. Well, but, so it's it's yeah it's interesting i'd have to see how how superboy's story lines up going through the new 52 and through rebirth he um, disappears the way it was because yeah does he yeah because like something happens to this new 52 version of superboy he disappears because then we get to rebirth and it's john kent and then we get connor who was stuck in gym in world gym world and he returned. was more like the 90s yeah. Uh Superboy. Yeah, and that's who we have now. Yeah. And I I I'm be honest, I've said this over and over. I hate the tactile telekinesis. Like I just don't like that as a power. I don't <laughs> like it as a Kryptonian power. If it's its own thing, it's fine. But I just think that Well, I, I don't always... know that it's a Kryptonian power. It's a hybrid power. That's and um, I'm just saying, like, I just the, don't the like one it. thing. The one thing that I did like, um, and maybe this is why I like the cloning aspect a little bit more, at least the way it was utilized here, was the fact that when they were talking about clones, they were talking about how they were violent and rage filled and things like that. And that's what happened um, when they tried cloning Superman's DNA is it was rage filled and everything. So the idea that even Kryptonians couldn't clone themselves, like their biology doesn't lend mm -hmm. to cloning. Um, that, that they just, that they become like these monsters, like these rage filled, just creature, like people, you know, cause they're not mm -hmm. like people. Um, 
but on Earth, merging the human and Kryptonian DNA is what actually made it stable and viable to be able to do so. See, so I, I it mean, was something interesting, something new they would never have thought of or could never have thought of because they were one race Kryptonian. They didn't have access to humans and DNA and their cloning days were long behind them. I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, it's it's yeah. a good it's a good statement. Now, as we see in this issue, Hell is able to make himself appear to Kara as Cal, and he basically says a bunch of crap to win to drive Kara against Cal. And then we see Hell has different powers, and so they talk about him, you know, influencing Superboy's TK. He basically puts Superboy like in the hospital, or, like crushing him so bad and now my page just resets yeah um i don't know if it was here or if it's in a in between issue but he talks about how he um tried to rip him in two rip his Mm -hmm. genetic his genetic material in half um separate the human and the and the kryptonian trying to kill to to like destroy him uh so The next issue is the first issue of Superman that has Lex Luthor in it. It's entitled Because I'm a Scorpion. And it has Superman now wearing his t-shirt and pants look again, but not the farmer pants like he did in action with his cape, while Superboy is healing wearing the Kryptonian armor. And they go to see Lex Luthor. And like I said, this is the f- interesting for we're in the f- thing about it, we're in the second year now. And this is the first time Superman in Superman is meeting Lex Luthor. Now, like I said, we are, once we f- get caught up on Superman to a certain point, we're going to start doing action. And we'll talk about that. Yeah. Ideally, um, it's not till the third arc of Superman in this. Yeah run before we even see Lex Luthor. And at this point he's in prison. And the really interesting thing is like, this is how we're going to show, show you and tell you that Lex is super evil and super brilliant is because I don't know if they arrested him or whatever, but he appealed to his vanity saying design a prison that you couldn't even escape. And then they imprison him in that. So is he, is he there voluntarily and he can't escape or what? I I can't. We go back, it's in action. And that's why I'm saying, like, I feel like some of this works and some of it doesn't. Because I feel like reading this story. Yeah, not reading them separately almost. Because definitely this, the way it jumps, the, the time difference in the stories. Reading just volume three, I feel like I get the story. But you have to make a lot of inferences, like, about certain things. For example... It's in the super it's in the one of the tie in issues of either Superboy um, where he, you know, Clark takes off the armor and when it touches Superboy, it turns, you know, to the house of L and he knows that's why he has part of his DNA in him. Mm. Um, but, you know, that's not in here. And then the Justice League show up. Right. And then, and then there's have... the part where Hell gets into and locks him out of the fortress, which I which is probably, I think, in Supergirl. But it is not in in this. And then we have the issue, a fistful of sticks, which is supposed to it's hell telling his story and about him and Jarrell. And he's telling to Supergirl and she's basically like, I don't remember any of this. How would I have not known? How would this have never come up? And it's them basically busting back into the fortress. And it's the Justice League with them. And we learn that hell has basically made a machine that will take him back to Krypton before it's destroyed, but it'll destroy earth and he's willing to sacrifice all of earth. And then it gets even more convoluted <laughs> um, because we go into the far reaches of space with the, the crew of the starship as they pass by the giant, uh, what are these things called again? Like Oracle. monolith. Yeah, Oracle. And I'm just like, okay. And that's where we get our title at Fury at World's End. 
It is, and, it is like you said, like a monolith, but it's just like yes. this sentient monolith that floats through space and uh, basically bears witness to the end of worlds. I don't know. And just, we see, and we like, we see Dr. Veritas and we see hell, hell and we, you know, it's, it's revealed to more of the truth is revealed to Supergirl what's going on and how he lied to her. And basically she grabs a piece of kryptonite, hides it and stabs him in the heart with kryptonite. And, you know, Clark grabs Kara and is holding her and goes flying with her as, you know, the epilogue hell is transported back in the past. And, you know, that's the that's the conclusion. And my question to you, Mr. Cole, is do you feel like you got a story out of this without the tie ins or do we need the tie ins to really feel like we got this story because this trade was part of, you know, a larger arc? Um, I feel that the story is lacking. Um, you can feel it. You can see it. There's a lot of gaps there. Um, you do need the other books as for the tie-ins, um, because I don't even I don't even feel that this was the main issues of the of the how the House of uh, or the Hell book. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't even feel like these are like I feel like these are also tie-in issues. Hmm. You know, um, it's, it's weird because like sometimes events have their own books where it's book one, two, three, four, five, you know, maybe six or whatever. And it has its own main line book where you get the, where you get the majority of the story right there and you can read just those six issues. Mm -hmm. And then there are other events, um, kind of like the countdown to absolute power going on right now kind of like the house of brainiac going on right now where part one is in this book part two is in this book part three is in this book part four and you know together they build the event mm -hmm. like those are they're all essential books to build the event whereas and and, and i feel that's how this hell story is where you need an issue of Superman, you need the issue of Supergirl, you need the issue of Superboy to give you um, your your complete story because they're they're part of the main beef of that story. Um, that uh, and I feel like that's just how this story is built, very similar to like I said, like where the events are created from these books and it's not just one. Yeah. It's not the book is its own event book. And then you have the tie in stories that, you know, you can leave out. I feel like this is one of those stories where the event requires the other books. I agree. It, it, it's and I almost feel like, like if you bought these trades, I'm sorry, if, if I almost feel like if you bought these trades, you could leave out volume three and whatever volume of the other books i think i think they have it lined up hell book yeah have it, them all together so you would ha you wouldn't have that trade of like say part three of superman because of all the issues would be in the hell book you'd have that it, event lodged in the center yep. because i think it's it lines up it's volume three across those titles so volume three supergirl Volume three, Superman, and volume three, Superboy are all the hell stories. Well, because I know Doomed, Superman Doomed is the exact same way. And we're going to be doing Doomed here soon. I have, I have, and we're going to do it. Book, I have the full trade. That's how we're, that's how we're going to do Doomed. Okay. Cause I don't want to do Doomed like this. <laughs> no. This, like I said, part of this reading is an experiment into. Oh, no, that's writing, okay. You know, so, but yeah. We will be doing Doomed here soon with a special guest. But Ooh, that's cool. it for now, guys. Alora's calling James. Life's calling me. And hell's on earth. So remember. <laughs>
Look up in the sky. We want to thank you for checking out the Krypton Report podcast. And we ask you to check us out on all of our social media. On Twitter X, Facebook, Instagram, Blue Sky, Hive, Threads, YouTube. We're everywhere. And if you want to be a guest on the podcast, just send us a message and let us know. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope.